Hello, everyone, and welcome. We will be getting started with the webinar at the top of the hour, so we have about four minutes to go. In the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to use the chat area. Welcome, I see we have a new join. We will be starting the webinar at the top of the hour, so we have about a minute to go. In the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the chat area. All right, it's the top of the hour, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Welcome everyone. This is the Health Technology for Wellness While Social Distancing webinar. My name is Melissa Houston, and I am a faculty support agent with the Center for Faculty Excellence here at Walden. So as we get started, we're going to go over some housekeeping items and then go over health technology and how it can be used to promote wellness. Then we'll have time for a group discussion and some Q&A followed by a closing. All right, so if you look at the center of your screen, we have some housekeeping items. If you need to adjust your audio settings, those are in the bottom left corner. You can click on that to test your speaker and your microphone and adjust the volume. During the webinar, we also have the option of Q&A, chats, and there's also closed captions down at the bottom. So if you click on there, you can open up the different areas of the Zoom room. And then up at the top, there's a view options button. If you click on that, you can adjust the Zoom ratio or exit full screen mode if you would like to see the chat 
next to the webinar. Okay, and we're going to start off today by talking about the importance of wellness during COVID-19. So many of us may be experiencing some increased stress. So wellness is very important. It can help with our sleep patterns and improve our mood. It can also help maintain healthy routines, which are important if our schedules have been kind of uprooted a little bit because of COVID. It also reduces stress and sharpens focus. So health technology can help with all of these different things for our wellness. And health tech is basically any technology that helps with our health and then also improves wellness. And this can help you make decisions about your health, such as um, new healthy routines. You can develop new options for prevention of certain things like um, increased stress. And then if you have any um, underlying conditions, you can help also with diagnosis and management of those as well. There's also options for holistic care when you're using health tech. So if you're someone who prefers, you know, meditation or other holistic options rather than, you know, certain medicinal options, you can test those out using health tech. So this would include any mobile health applications on any device, and then also health information technology, wearable devices, which I'll be going over some examples later, telehealth and telemedicine, those are considered a health technology, and then any type of personalized medicine that can be used with technology. There's a lot of different um, wearable tech that can personalize treatment options. And that's not just smartwatches, there's a lot of other options as well. So the benefits of health technology are pretty well documented. These above all can help encourage healthy behaviors. So maybe it's not necessarily going to be a technology that fixes a problem, but it's going to encourage us to be more healthy, encourage well-being. You can also use tech to set important reminders, um, maybe to take medications or to remind you to get up and move. Um, this also can help improve health records. You can use health tech to analyze your lifestyle. It can also give you some very helpful metrics to understanding your overall wellness. Technology also makes access to different, a variety of tools related to health easier. So you're going to have not only more convenient access to care, but also a wider variety of options to choose from as far as, you know, something that works for you. Not every solution is going to work for everyone. So with lots of different options, you're more likely to find something that you find helpful, which in turn can help improve health and wellness outcomes. And it also gives you more control over your personal health and wellness. So I mentioned wearable tech earlier. A lot of us automatically think of smartwatches like Fitbit or um, Apple watches, but there's so much more than that. There's now body mounted sensors, or sensors such as blood pressure monitors, glucose monitors, that type of technology that you don't have to go to the doctor anymore just to have those screenings done. You can actually have these personal monitors for yourself, and a lot of them are over the counter. There's also fitness trackers. So I mentioned Fitbit. So similar trackers like those, including pedometers, those are going to help you track your fitness, any goals that you have, um, any activity that you do throughout the day. And then also, you know, if you're interested in tracking any um, sleep patterns, food intake, so many other options. Those are available as well on many different platforms. There's also some really cool wearable tech through um, head-mounted displays. So that could be VR headsets, but then also other types of reality headsets. So you might be familiar with like the Go cams that you can wear as you bike and things, those would be considered a head-mounted display. 
So I also mentioned sleep tracking on your fitness trackers, but there are things completely dedicated just to sleep monitoring. Another thing that's not listed on here, but um, is another option, and it would be under the bottom bullet here, is smart clothing, jewelry, and watches. These are very variable. You can get all kinds of different wearable tech that is um, jewelry-based or watch-based, but there's also clothes. So they now make like tank tops and t-shirts that you can wear to actually track your fitness, which is pretty cool. And then with the jewelry and watches, there are some that are specifically dedicated not to fitness, but to wellness. So they track sleep, they track your heart rate to, uh, to kind of analyze your stress levels and help you relax and de-stress, which is nice because we all have different needs and stress right now particularly may be something that more of us are wanting to monitor. So one of the largest areas of health tech is mobile technology. So apps on your smartphone or tablets, there are so many of these, but the primary types are education-based, so helping us learn about wellness. There's a lot of fitness on demand apps, so we can just get on our phone or our tablet or even some TVs and just get to exercising without any subscriptions or having to go to the gym. There's also food journals and other health tracking apps that you can find. My favorite are the mindfulness and meditation apps. I use these a lot. They're really great and I have some listed later. There's also reminder apps and of course telehealth. So here I have some examples of the different health apps. So these are all highly rated and primarily free to access and use. Some of them may have um, affiliated content or things that you might have to subscribe to. For the most part though, these are easy to access and free. So for tracking, my favorite out of these is um, Fitbit and MyFitnessPal. Those are my two favorite, but if um, you wanna check out some of the other ones, there's Fabulous Follow My Health and Map My Fitness. And then for fitness, there are just so many, it's honestly hard to pick and can be a little overwhelming when you go into your phone's app store. But these are super popular ones. They were rated very highly and have a lot of different options. Now I see that someone has a question about sleep tracking. That's a really great question. There are a lot of sleep tracking apps. I didn't include it on this one. I kind of kept it in the tracking. Um, Fitbit is one that tracks your sleep and Fabulous also tracks your sleep. So you can do those as well. You do have to connect to a wearable device for both of those in order for it to track your sleep. But there are manual ones as well that if you just kind of look, you can input. Um, I have one on my phone. I have an Android and it's built right into my system and I can actually set my phone to, um, it doesn't go to sleep, but it changes the color on the phone to black and white and reduces what's on it. So I'm not using it at night staying up. And then it also tells me when I fell asleep and when I woke, woke up. So there are a lot of apps like that as well. Great question. So for nutrition, these are the highest rated ones. I've not personally used any of these, but they're very highly rated and they all do very similar things. One of the ones though I found most interesting and I'm probably going to get into is ShopWell. That app is going to tell you um, the health information about food, so nutrition information when you're shopping. So you can look through kind of your grocery list as you go through and determine, you know, which foods are going to be more nutritious and help you make better choices. And then our last category is mindfulness. This is my favorite. I personally really like Calm and Insight Timer. Those are my two favorites on this list. I use them almost every day. But the other ones on here are very highly rated. It's really a personal preference. And again, with any of these apps, a simple search online or in your app store is going to help you find just an absolute ton of resources about all of these different technologies. 
So right now, one of the hardest things is transitioning into a different mindset with wellness and also changing our patterns of how we um, become more healthful and continue on with our routines for wellness and then also changing those to adapt to the new normal. So I've come up with a list um, after consulting and having several other webinars about fun ideas for wellness. And we had a lot of faculty in previous webinars we did about social distancing, give some great ideas. So I combined those with just some ideas that were developed by my team. So here we have some great ones. So on this slide, one of the ones that has been mentioned a bunch is attending virtual fitness classes. And these have become even more readily available than even a few months ago. A lot of places are having this open up online. So companies that typically do in-person fitness classes are now moving to virtual fitness classes. So I would take a look online and just see. YouTube is a great resource for this, but then also some of the apps that I shared for fitness are also doing the virtual fitness classes. One that's also a good idea is if you're exercising, but you're not really a fan of exercising by yourself, is to call a family member or a friend. Even if you can't be together, at least you can talk to each other. And then, of course, there are so many apps that allow you to use video. So it could be a video call rather than just a phone call. Another fun one is to create a TV or movie watching activity challenge. I've seen a ton of these online, uh, particularly on Pinterest. If any of you do that, just kind of look them up. Basically, what it is is you come up with every time a certain type of thing happens while you're watching a show or a movie, you have to do a specific type of activity. So whether it's jumping jacks or push-ups, and that's fun. Um, me and my husband have done that a little bit during this, and it keeps it entertaining, but also allows you to still be active. Have an at-home dance party. We've heard this from faculty, and I personally do this at home with my toddler and it's a lot of fun. So just turn on some music and dance. Um, one of the fitness apps that I recommended for on-demand fitness actually has um, specific dance fitness classes that you can attend to. So if you're not really into the idea of like freestyle, you can always use a guided um, dance fitness class. Then, of course, having outdoor fun with your kids and family. We're all trying to get outdoors more because we know that with airflow and things, it is pretty safe. So if you're outside, definitely get out there, have some fun, move around. Another option is to join or host a virtual health challenge. So you could do this with family or friends. There's also a lot of them that you can search for online. And I'll show another idea in a little bit um, that's similar to this. One that actually I got from my neighborhood that I thought was pretty cool was an outdoor scavenger hunt. So people basically came up with this idea, let's do an outdoor social, distance, uh, social distancing scavenger hunt. So on Nextdoor, that's an app for neighborhoods. People put clues and things for where they um, put a certain item. So like people in my neighborhood, for example, use teddy bears. So they had like stuffed animals that they kind of positioned around and people had to drive around or walk around and say where they saw it, which I thought was pretty cool. And people got their kids involved, which was fun. All right, so some more ideas. We heard about virtual cooking lessons or people cooking together even if they couldn't be together physically. And then another fun one is if you're into video games, there's a lot of the active video games. So certain consoles have sensors that you can put up and have like fitness games that you can play. So that's one way of combining different options for fun and still being active. 
Another one that I've seen going around social media is posting how people are being active or any um, fitness goals or maybe challenges that they've been engaging in. And you'll kind of see if you start doing this, it does encourage and motivate others to join in on being active. So you can virtually, you know, get moving and also maybe help others who are wanting to join you. All right, so this is the next one that I mentioned earlier. Um, so one of the virtual challenges that you can find doing a quick search are virtual races. They have a lot of really cool ones with some fun themes, and it's basically at your own pace. So what I like about this is you can do it however you would like. You don't have to run. You could walk, you could bike, and it's totally at your own pace and distance. Um, you can set specific distances with some of them, or you can have a set one. And it's neat because they'll actually like send you a care package that has like an on theme shirt. And when you finish, you get like a little um, medal, an award for finishing, which is really cool. A lot of them, you do have to have a fitness tracker of some sort, like a Fitbit or another smartwatch. That way it can connect and you can add it. But some of them are manual, so you just kind of have to look and see. But I actually completed one for, that was um, Harry Potter themed, which was really cute. And you got to pick like your Hogwarts house. So your <laughs> prize package that you got was custom, which was fun. Another one that I have personally been doing is um, taking your dog on an extra walk. So maybe you typically only take your dog on one walk a day. So if you take them on an extra one, this one isn't necessarily about exercise, exercise. What it is, is getting out there, getting active, but letting your dog actually engage in some canine enrichment by doing some sniffing, some walking themselves, and what's really cool is there's actually wearable tech for dogs too. My dog has an activity tracker on her collar. So we can see if she is getting enough exercise as well. And then the last idea we have here is to find some new recipes, maybe something healthy or seasonal. I use Pinterest for this, but there's lots of other apps and social media options where you can find different ideas too. And if you are like me and you started a garden during all of this, you'll be able to use your new fresh produce in those recipes. Okay, so I have a few resources here. Um, on the left-hand side, you're going to see some desk yoga. We've shared this a couple times in our previous webinars. But I wanted to share it again because these are just so great. I do the neck and shoulders one almost every single day, and I really, really like it. Most of these are five minutes or less. Some of them are a little longer. And then on the right side, these are some items that are specifically from the CDC and um, other government resources for health. So Move Your Way Activity Planner is actually an online um, fitness and wellness planner. So you can go on there, you can look at it, take an, you know a few minutes, see if it would work for you. And I believe that's from health.gov. And then also there is a guide from the CDC about how to stay active during the pandemic and also a guide that gives you ideas for how to break up your work day and still be active. So it gives ideas for um, other types of desk yoga and then other things you can do, you know, while you're actually at work, whether you are at home and working from home, or if you do happen to be going into the office, it gives some ideas for that as well. Okay, so now it's time for a group discussion, and I have some prompts here, so feel free to use the chat area um, to type in your answers. So here we have, what health or mindfulness apps do you use or recommend? So my top ones for this, for sure, are Calm and Insight Timer. I just, I really like those. They work for me really well as far as 
reducing stress and helping me relax. And then also, I really like my Fitbit. I wear it pretty much every day. And it has, the one that I have has so many different tools. It actually has like a a breathing thing on it. So I can do like two or five minute breathing breaks. It also gives me reminders to get up and move every hour. It gives me so many steps to complete, which is nice. So those are mine. So feel free in the chat to include any that you would recommend as well. And I'm going to move on, but if I see any, I will read them out to share with the group. So for number two, wearable tech. So what wearable tech do you use or recommend? So again, mine, I really like the Fitbit. That's my personal preference, but there are just so many different options for wearable tech. Um, I came across one and I held off just because I wanted to think on it, but there's one that you can actually wear. It's like a little leaf and I'm trying to remember what it's called, but it's the one that I was mentioning earlier that um, tracks your stress and your sleep cycle. So that one's really neat. Okay, I see we have a few items in the chat. So I see sleep cycle is my favorite app for tracking sleep. So that's a good recommendation. I didn't have any specific ones for sleep. So that's definitely, if you're interested, check that one out. And then my fitness pal, that's a great one. I do like that one as well. So that's a good app to check out. And that one's available across devices. Okay, and then our third item here, maybe you don't use anything now, but is there any health tech or resources or ideas for um, staying active while social distancing that you would like to share? And that doesn't necessarily have to be just fitness or activity. It could also be um, any wellness in general, things to reduce stress, any recommendations for fun things to do. Feel free to put those in the chat area. I'm going to just give everybody a minute and I'll read anything else out that comes in. All right, I meditate for about 10 minutes every morning. That's great. I try at the end of every work day to do about 10 minutes of some type of relaxation activity. Yeah, 10 minutes, that seems to be a really good amount of time for me as well. I do highly recommend it. And if you're not into meditating, even just like five minutes of kind of sitting and breathing and just giving yourself a moment, any way to relax. Yes, I try to take frequent breaks from the computer. Absolutely. It is great if you're able, especially if you're working from home, if you're able to just get up every so often and give yourself a quick break to walk around, stretch a bit. I like to do that as well. And if you don't have time to physically get up, that's where those desk yoga items might be helpful because a lot of those you can do just sitting right at your desk. All right. Do we have anything else? And feel free also, if you would prefer not to use the chat, if you would rather raise your hand, I can unmute you. So feel free to do that as well. We have a pretty small group today. All right, I'm gonna go back because we have a question about where the link for the neck and shoulder exercise is. So that's on the online resources slide. It is the second item on the left. And this um, presentation, so the PowerPoint, that'll be made available this week on the CFE website in the webinar archive. We'll have up the video from today, so the recording from today, as well as the PDF. And I do, I have a lot of online resources here and the list again, I'll go back and share really quickly. The list of the health apps, these are all searchable. These are all across devices. So you can use these on Android or Apple devices. 
So just search for them. I made sure to only include ones that would work on both. All right, moving forward. All right, now it's time for Q&A. Feel free to write any questions you have in the chat area. Also, again, if you would like, feel free to raise your hand and I can unmute you as well. All right, we have a great question in the chat. Are you planning to offer any more sessions like this? This was really beneficial. The FSAs have been offering sessions about um, wellness and social distancing since I would say about March when um, COVID began um, here in the US. And we've been trying to stick to that theme to try to help people figure out what kind of technology is out there to help with social distancing. So we've been on that theme for a while and I think we're also going to continue on with it. I'm not sure what our next theme is, but if you do have any suggestions for us, any ideas for things you would like to see covered in a future session, feel free to pop that in the chat. I would love to hear it. We would love ideas to kind of continuing developing these offerings for you. All right, we have a suggestion in the chat. Yes, Fit is a good source for virtual races with great themes. I love those virtual races. I think it's so fun. And I really like that they're considerate of people's different levels of ability. I'm a proponent for inclusivity in all areas, but it's really nice to have fitness available for people with all different abilities. And those virtual races are a great resource for that. I do have personally myself some mobility issues and I was able to complete one of those virtual races on my own and it was great. Oh, we have a really great mention. Um, Walden did a 10 day, uh, 10K a day team walk last year. I don't know if they'll do it again this year, but I really hope they do. I loved that, it was fun. There was an app on the phone, you could access it from your computer and you build out teams and work together to get to 10K a day each. It was really cool, I loved it. All right, I'll give everyone just another minute or two to pop stuff in the chat. Again, questions, any suggestions you have for health tech, and also if you have any ideas for what you would see in future professional development offerings or webinar topics, feel free to post those as well. All right, if you are still typing, feel free to do so. I'm just gonna continue on. If you would like to connect with the FSAs, we are on social media. You can find us with our handle at Walden FSA, and then I've included some of the hashtags that we use on our posts. We also have a podcast that is on SoundCloud. So if you would like to hear about any instructional tech tips, um, any tips and tricks, troubleshooting advice, or other technology related topics, feel free to subscribe or listen to our podcast. So I've linked it here. I will be doing a podcast later this month that is about health tech. So if you want a reminder of anything I went over, you'll have that so you could listen to it while you're on the go and get some additional ideas or reminders. I've also included the resources that I use to build out the webinar today. So if you're interested, feel free to take a look. They're all here. And now we're at our closing. Again, this presentation will be made available later this week or early next week on the CFU website in the webinar archive. 
So feel free to check it out there if you would like to view the recording and get a copy of the PDF of the um, presentation. If you have any questions at any point about health tech or any other technology related topic, please feel free to email me. I'm typing in my email that I have listed here in the chat as well so you can grab it. That's faculty support agents at mail.waldenu.edu. Feel free to reach out to us with any questions you have. And if you would like to set up any one-on-one -on -one time with an FSA, I also have our bookings page linked here as well. All right, everyone, thank you so much for attending today. If you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. In the meantime, until next time, please stay safe and stay healthy. Have a great day, everyone.